Hi, if you have a modern electronic package board for the Wang 300 calculator, I want to give you some extra information about how to adjust the Nixie tube brightness, replace the key labels, and replace the key switches. I also have a couple of tips about installing the board. This is the second video I've made about the modern electronic package. If you haven't seen the previous one yet, you should watch it first. So we start by opening up the console. Remember that there's 250 volts in here, so we always unplug it first. I showed in my previous video how to install the modern electronic package board, but here's a helpful trick. It can be tough to line up the edge cards so that they go all the way into the slots. So what you can do is push in one side, then shove the board over so that it butts up against the end of the slot, then press in the other side. When you look down in, you shouldn't be able to see any of the metal traces on the edge card. When you put the bottom plate back on, it will bulge a bit around the power connector. So you might want to add four small spacers between the plate and the enclosure. Now let's adjust the brightness of the Nixies. There's a potentiometer on the high voltage board that adjusts the output voltage. Connect a multimeter to the zero volt pin, which is the third pin from the left to the display board, and the high voltage pin, which is eighth from the left, which also happens to be the middle pin. Set the multimeter to read volts. If your multimeter has different range settings, select the range that includes 300 volts. Stand the console on its side so that you can see the display, plug it in, and turn it on. Remember that there's high voltage in there now, so be very careful what you touch. Hold the plastic case with one hand, use a small screwdriver in the other hand to adjust the potentiometer. Keep an eye on the multimeter's readout. The Wang schematic specifies 250 volts. You can exceed that at your own risk. You'll get a brighter display, but you might shorten the lifetime of the Nixies. On the other hand, if you have any digits that don't light up because of cathode poisoning, temporarily putting a higher voltage through them might, I said might, clear up the problem. Okay, let's say you've installed the board. You've tested the keys as I described doing in my previous video, and you've opened the console up again to either change the key labels or replace defective key switches. So we need to remove the electronic package board. We don't want to flex the board, so don't pull up by the edges. Grab it near the edge connectors and rock it out. Next, we unscrew the back board of the keyboard assembly. There are six screws. The key labels come on an adhesive label sheet. You need to cut them apart. There are lots of extras in case you make a mistake. Since they're adhesive labels, you have a choice. You can peel them off and stick them on the plastic caps, or you can disassemble the keyboard, remove the plastic caps, and put the new labels in them. You can just lay them on top of the old labels so that you don't lose the old labels. But if you do this, don't peel off the adhesive back. You don't want them to stick to the old labels and damage them. So I recommend using an X-Acto knife to cut all the way through the adhesive sheet. For the keyboard, you'll see that there are all these pegs that go through all these plastic shoulders. The shoulders push down on the key switches. Some of the shoulders are cut so that they fit up against the board spacers. Pull the peg out. Remove the plastic cap. Put the new label on top of the old and put the cap back on. Stick the peg back through the shoulder. The square part of the peg should fit through the square cutout in the aluminum plate and the wide end of the shoulder should be up. Let's say you need to replace one of the key switches. The part number is 11SM1-T. There are similar switches with different terminals. You want the T-type terminals. You can buy them from places like Digikey and Mauser, but they're cheaper on eBay. 
The switches have three leads, but only two are soldered in. I start by desoldering them and using a solder sucker two or three times. Then I heat up the two soldered terminals while gently pushing down on the unsoldered one. Be patient and be gentle. You don't want to rip the traces off the board, but it should come out fairly quickly. Put your replacement in. The terminals are spaced unevenly, so there's only one way it will go in. I solder one terminal, then look at the switch from the other side. It's probably not flush with the board, so I reheat the joint while pushing on the switch. Then I solder the second terminal, leave the third unsoldered just like the original was. Putting the board back on is tricky since so many pegs need to line up with their holes. To make it easier, start by setting all the toggle switches to the down position. When you lay the circuit board onto the pegs, make sure the toggle switches are going through their holes. Tilt the console back so the pegs are straight up. We don't want them leaning. Then start at the left side and try to get the pegs through the holes of the circuit board. You can reach under the keyboard and wiggle individual keys around until their pegs poke through the circuit board. Then work your way to the right until all the pegs are in. Finally, screw the circuit board back on. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye.